Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix and Perfect. How are you? I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and most importantly, happy. I understand it's a hard time for all of us. It's a very difficult situation. And I hope and pray that all of this ends soon for you and your family. So today we're going to be looking at an Instagram trend that's going around. And I've been receiving a lot of messages asking how to edit the skin in a particular way. So let's try this. I'm not saying that I'm going to be absolutely successful, but I've seen a lot of images and I'm going to do my attempt right there. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you guys already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do here is to add some contrast. And the best way to do that, you already might have guessed it, my favorite thing in Photoshop and that is curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon right there and then choose curves. We're going to use the hand at the very top. It's not going to be complicated. Don't worry. Inside the curves, we always know that the right hand side represent the highlights and the left hand side represent the shadows. We need to brighten up this highlight area. So we're going to take the hand right there and let's choose sample size to 3x3 three three or 5x5. Five five. Let's choose 5x5 five five so that it can take an average of 5x5 five five pixels and not just pinpoint that one pixel which might not be accurate. We need to make these areas brighter. So we will click and drag it up. So we have made them brighter and we need to make these areas darker. So we will click and drag them down. Something like this. Now when you zoom out, look at the shine. It looks exciting, but also at the same time, this has created a lot of shadow right here. So we need to brighten up the shadows. So we're going to click and drag up the shadows. See how simple this thing is? We want to make sure that the highlights look a little more bright. So we will take the rightmost point and take it slowly and gradually towards the left. Just make sure that we are not losing enough details. So right now, let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Looks pretty good, but there is an issue. The colors just don't look right. So we want the curves adjustment layer to not affect the colors, only the luminosity. And for that, we're going to choose the blend mode. Guess what? luminosity right so change the blend mode from normal to luminosity right there so right now it's not affecting the colors and we only want this on the skin right so select the mask press ctrl or command i that's going to invert the mask turn the whole mask black now what is the concept of mask black conceals white reveals right now the entire mask is black so nothing shows up the curves shows up in no area as soon as we start with the brush, white is the foreground color and we start painting with white on the skin, the curves begin to appear in the skin area. Let's paint over the skin. This looks nice. And right now let's add some warmth to the skin. And we cannot add warmth with this curves adjustment layer. You know why? Because we already changed the blend mode to luminosity which means no matter what we do, it's not going to affect the color. So we need to create one more curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. I think we should make it a little more brighter, just like this. And then let's go to the blue channel. We're going to add some yellow to it. Now there is no yellow right there, but keep in mind, blue is the opposite of yellow. So if we decrease the blue, it's going to bring up yellow. So let's bring it down just like that. But once we take it down, this looks a little greenish. So let's go to the green channel and reduce that as well to add some magenta. There you go. So here's the before, here's the after. Now we only wanted to apply this to the skin, right? So let's copy this mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click and drag the mask and drop it right there. Do you want to replace it? Of course, yes. All right. Now let's group it if you want to. So select the first curve, hold the Control or Command, select the second curve, press Control or Command G for grouping them. G stands for group. So you can name this curves contrast. And this is just for organization, my friends. All right. So let's take a look at the before and after. This is the before. This is the after. Already looking interesting, isn't it? The next thing we need to do is some frequency separation. And this is where the magic happens. You don't have to do anything complicated. I already have an action for that. You can download that using the link in the description. And if you want to learn more about frequency separation, we already have a lot of videos. They all are linked in the description. So let's go to window and click on actions if it's not already open for you. 
all right now inside of that i already have an action called pix frequency separation now if your image is 8 bit play this one if your image is 16 bit play the top one how do you know that well have a look at this it says rgb8 or if you click on this arrow right there and then you go to document profile see 8 bpc and if you go to image mode it's going to show you again 8 bits per channel bpc you get that so let's play fs 8 bit let's play that it's going to open up gaussian blur for you let's take the radius all the way to the left and slowly and gradually increase it until the skin becomes smoother for this one i'm going to choose a very high value because i don't want to work too hard into this so let's go for 9.8 hit enter and there you go now frequency separation group is created inside of that there are two layers high frequency and low frequency both of them combine together to give you this image so we can say that this image is separated into high frequency and low frequency high frequency meaning details and low frequency meaning color all right so if we turn off the high frequency you will see just the color information in between what we can do we're going to create a brand new layer all right and we're going to name this skin one you can create multiple layers if you want to let's take the eyedropper tool make sure sample all layers or current and below is selected sample size 5 by 5 is fine then take the brush take a soft round brush decrease the flow to about 5% or less now all you have to do let's zoom out a little bit is to just sample and even the skin you don't have to work too hard just make sure that the highlight areas are just perfectly done so I'm going to take a sample right here and just paint take a sample paint just making sure that the highlight areas are done properly you can also pick a brighter color if you want so let's say I want to paint with white I can pick white hit OK and start painting with it let's decrease the flow to about 1% I think this looks okay now let's turn on the details or in other words the high frequency and let's see how it looks let's zoom out a little bit let's take a look at before and after frequency separation so this is before frequency separation and this is after frequency separation I think there's too much brightness on here on the left so we can get back to the skin and take the brush and with the high frequency turned on as well we can still work on that just make this area a little darker and let's take a look here's the before here's the after I think we can still work on this area now this looks beautiful but it's kind of too much so let's decrease the opacity not of the entire frequency separation but just for skin one so let's decrease the opacity to zero and slowly and gradually increase it to a value that suits to us so 70% is fine here's the before here's the after looks much better now it's time for us to add some more dimension to it guess what we're gonna do next a very simple dodging and burning create a brand new layer and we can simply name this dodge and burn and you don't have to do anything complicated just simply change the blend mode of this layer from normal to soft light make sure the foreground and the background colors are white and black simply take the brush and start painting with a low flow probably one or two and whenever you want to dodge just paint with white Whenever you want to burn, press X. Now the foreground color would be black and you can paint to burn. If you want to erase the extras, you can always choose the eraser tool. Choose a flow like 10 and then erase the extras if you want to. Now this looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the complete before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. So much difference already, isn't it? Now if you ask me, the skin looks a little too colorful. Let's tone it down a little bit. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose Vibrance. So we're going to simply decrease the Vibrance. So let's decrease it a little bit. 
to about minus 15 or minus 16 and we only want to decrease it in the skin area. So simply copy the mask. So if you just open up the curves contrast group, we already have a mask there. So hold the alt key or the option key, click and drag the mask to vibrance. Do you want to replace it? Of course, yes. So we have just gotten the skin color to look more natural. So before vibrance, it looks a little too colorful. If we turn it on, the color looks fine. I think I've decreased it way too much. Let's set it to about minus seven. That looks okay. Now we have worked on the skin a lot. Time for us to enhance the lips. So let's zoom in to the lips. And to enhance it, we're gonna create one more curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. I'm telling you, if you have mastered curves in Photoshop, you're already halfway there. Create a point in the middle and take it up, all right? We just wanna add some shine to the lips. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. This opens up the layer styles dialog box and we want to take away this brightness from the dark areas. So take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. This seems to be about right. Hold the alt key or the option key. Click on the slider to break it apart. Make the transition smoother. Something like this looks nice. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Click on the mask. Press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush. White as the foreground color. Flow and opacity at 100. And simply paint on the lips. It adds a little bit gloss to it. So here's the before, here's the after. It's kind of too much. Let's decrease the opacity. Let's set it to about 60%. Now let's get the lips some shape. And for that, first we need to select the lips. Now you can use the pen tool for it. So let's select the pen tool and then you can start making a selection of the lips. Now you can take all the time in the world to do it. This is not a masking class. So I've already made a selection. So let me load that for you. So I'm going to go to select, load selection, and I'm going to load in the lips. Hit OK. I already made the selection. But if you take a closer look, this selection is very sharp. We need to add some smoothness, some softness to it. So we could have added a feather. However, if you have not added a feather, what I would recommend is don't add a feather first because then you would have to guess it, go back, select again, guess the number if the feather is not right. It is better to make a selection first and then go to the quick mask mode. Press Q. Right now you can see how sharp the selection is. Then we can go to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. Apply a Gaussian blur and you can see real time how soft selection is getting. For this one, we're going to go for a value of 3 or let's go for 3.5. Hit enter or click on OK. And then if you press Q again, it's going to come back to the selection and have a look. The selection is softer. So let's create a brand new layer and let's name this Lip Retouch. And all you have to do right in here is that select the Clone Stamp tool. Make sure sample is current and below. Right now, the lip is selected. The inside area is selected. Let's start with the outside. To select the outside area, we need to invert the selection. Press Ctrl Shift I or Command Shift I. And then let's take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and just paint. The selection will maintain the shape of the lips. Looks pretty good. If you want to momentarily hide the selection, this is not deselecting it. If you want to hide it momentarily, you can always press Ctrl or Command H. H for hide. Now let's invert the selection. So if you press Ctrl or Command H, the selection will show up again. And press Ctrl Shift I to invert the selection. And let's do the cloning inside out this time. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and just paint. There you go. Once you have got the shape, press Ctrl or Command D. And let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before, not very clear at all. Look at the after, that makes so much of a difference, my friend. If you think this is too much, you can always decrease the opacity and slowly and gradually increase it to a point where you think it's okay. So this looks okay to me. On top of that, you can also do some more modifications. For instance, let's load up the selection again by going to select and I'm gonna load the selection and it was lips, hit OK. So this is the selection. Let's blur the selection a little bit. Q for the quick mask. Let's go to filter and Gaussian blur. It added the Gaussian blur that we had already added before. Press Q again. Now this is a soft selection. And click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Now we are modifying the reds, right? The hue saturation is loaded with that active selection as a mask now. So let's change it to reds and then we can 
decrease the lightness a little bit, increase the saturation and play with the hue if you wanted to. So that way you can just play with the color. So for this one, let's make it a little darker, not too much saturation, just a little bit of it. Now when we zoom out, this part of the lip just doesn't look right. It looks too bright. For that, we need to get back to lip retouch and let's activate the selection. We already have it on file right there as a mask. So hold the control or command, click on the mask to make the selection active. Let's come back to lip retouch and then we're gonna go back to the clone stamp tool and from the inside, we need to darken it a little bit, right here. Let's create a nice boundary, even that side as well. Let's hide the selection momentarily by pressing Ctrl or Command H. Let's zoom out. Now that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Now let's get back to hue saturation, reds. Let's make it a little darker in my opinion. And that looks about right. So. You can group all of the layers which are dealing with the lips. So select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one. Everything in the row will be selected. Control or command G. Let's name this lips. And you can tone it down if you want to. If you think it's too much, you can tone it down. I'm going to keep it at about 85. That looks nice to me. Now keep in mind, do not forget the selection is still active. It is just hidden. If we press control or command H, it's going to show up back again. By the way, if you want to darken the lips even more, you can create a curves adjustment layer with the selection active. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And then we can darken it just a touch. All right. There you go, my friend. Interesting lips. Now I feel like I need to add a little more warmth to the skin. Now one of my favorite ways of doing that is using a LUT called Crisp Warm. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup and choose the lookup crisp warm right there. Now it adds warmth to the entire image. We only want it on the skin, right? So simply copy the skin mask. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and drop it right there. We already had that with Vibrance. Do you want to replace it? Of course, yes. Now, of course, this is too much and it's making the dark areas very dark. So let's take it away from the dark areas first by double clicking on the right side of the layer. Take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Hold Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and make the transition as smooth as possible. Take it to the extreme. One part is all the way to the left. Hit OK. This looks OK. So we can decrease the opacity on top of it if you want to. So I'm going to keep the opacity at about 65%. And by the way, how can we forget retouching the eyes? And we already have an action for it. You can download the action in the link below and we already have a video on how to use that action. So let's zoom in. Let's open up our actions panel. Now inside of that, I have this action called Piximperfect Retouch Eyes. Let's select that and simply play it. Now it's going to tell you remove the veins from the eyes. Click on stop. And then with the help of the healing brush tool, it's going to automatically select that for you, the regular healing brush tool. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then paint to remove all the veins that you want to. In this case, I'm not going to remove each and every one of them. Once you're done, Click play again, kicker light, click on stop and it's automatically going to select the brush for you. All you have to do is to just dab on the opposite side of the light. So if the light is coming from the top, dab on the opposite side at the bottom. Do the same on the other eye. Now take away the extras by painting black. Take away the extras from here as well. Similarly from the other eye, take away the extras. All right, once you're done. Play again, dab the highlights. So just paint over the highlight areas, just like this. You don't have to be careful there. Click play again. It's gonna take care of that automatically. Kick light high, stop. For the extreme highlight in the iris, just dab right there. Similarly, right there as well. And once you're done, hit play again. Paint on the eye whites, stop, and simply paint on the eye whites. To make them a little brighter, take the reds away, take the color cast away, just paint on them, click play again, paint on the iris, stop. And this is for boosting the colors, see, on the other one, play again. And this is for sharpening the eyes, you can skip it if you want to. So I'm going to keep a very low value of about, let's choose two, stop and you can paint on the eyes, 
to add some sharpness to it. I just want to paint on the iris a little bit. That's it. Hit play again. And this is for some extra details in the iris. Let's leave it to 4. Hit OK. Stop. And just to add some more details in the iris, you can paint here and there. And let's play again. I think it's done. There you go. So here's the before. Here's the after. Before, after. Let's zoom out and take a look. Before, after. If you want to increase the value of anything, you can just expand it. Expand the group. If you wanted to increase the kicker light, select that and increase the opacity. If you wanted to increase the eye highlight, you can do that as well. You can also go to the curves and increase the values. And then there is eye whites. If you want to increase the brightness of the eye whites, you can do that as well. So I'm going to increase it just a little bit to about maybe 42. If you want to remove the color cast of the eye white, you can do it right there. There's a lot of options that you can customize and control. Here's the before, here's the after. If you think it's too much, decrease the overall op opacity and slowly and gradually increase it to your liking. For me, at about 90% seems good. Now I think the face looks all right, but the background looks a little too dark. So let's brighten it and add some contrast. So again, let's create one more curves. So create a curve and then we're gonna just make the highlights a little brighter and create a point in the shadow area, just take it a little down. And this is only for the background, not for the skin. So again, hold the Alt key or the Option key. Let's copy this mask right there in the curve. Replace it. Yes. And we just want the opposite of that mask. So select that mask and then press Ctrl or Command I. Let's take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. We can make it a little more brighter if you want to. There you have it. Before after. Let's take a look at the complete before and after. I think it looks awesome. So this is the before and this is the after. So there you go. That's how to make your portraits a little more interesting for Instagram. To wrap it up, all we did was a lot of curves and the basis actually was contrast. We used contrast to add some more dimension to the face. Then we used frequency separation to even out the skin just a little bit. And after that, it was a contrast game. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.